We meet in an hour of change and challenge, in a decade of hope and fear, in an age of both knowledge and ignorance. If this capsule history of our progress teaches us anything, it is that man in his quest for knowledge and progress is determined and cannot be deterred. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. So today we're here with Konstantin Konstantinov, the CEO of the Independent Bulgarian Energy Exchange, also known as IBEX. Konstantin, welcome to the Energy Impact Podcast. Yeah, uh, hello, Adam. Uh, many thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure for me. Well, we're glad to have you here. Bulgaria is of critical importance to the European energy ecosystem. There's some very <laughs> wonderful and exciting things that are going on. But before we get into that, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? You're the CEO of IBEX. How did you get your start in energy and how did you end up at IBEX? Mm -hmm. uh, thanks once again, Adam. Actually, I'm an electrical engineering. I, I studied that in uh, the Technical University here in Sofia. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, in the end of my study, actually, because of my mentor there, I was uh, invited to start working for the distribution, local distribution company. Uh, electricity distribution company. Uh, actually, he, he worked for them and invited me. And this was a great opportunity for me to strike after, right after my uh, uh, diploma and uh, to start working uh, according to the stuff that I learned in the, in the university, actually. Uh, a few years later, actually, I'm talking about 2005th, 2004, 5th, uh, something like this, uh, a free electricity market uh, was about to start developing here in Bulgaria and the, in the region of uh, south-eastern south, uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. mm. At the time, I, I was invited to start working uh, for one uh, big uh, private company who was about uh, to uh, try to receive a license and to become a trader of uh, electricity here in Bulgaria. Actually, this was a great uh, opportunity for me because I was uh, among the first uh, members of such teams. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we were only six, seven companies in the beginning uh, with this license for trading with electricity in Bulgaria. And we have a direct contact with the biggest uh, producers uh, here in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. I am talking about the nuclear power plant of Kozlodui, the national electricity company who is running the, the hydros in Bulgaria, mm -hmm. and the biggest thermal power plant in Bulgaria, Maritaste 2. Uh, this was from one side. From another side, we uh, have to have a, uh, very close relations with the consumers. Mm -hmm. and to explaining what is uh, this uh, free market of electricity and so on. Yeah. Uh, well, what did you mean by you had a license? Do you mean that individual traders, like a stock trader had a license or the organization had a license? Uh, from the very beginning uh, in 2004, all the traders, all the companies uh, who want to trade with electricity uh, have to... Uh, has, uh, a trading license, which is issued by the National Regulatory Energy Authority here in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to start a new organization that could trade, are you able to do that? Or are there only specific types of companies that can be authorized to even apply for a license? Practically, every company is in position to apply for this license. Uh, and uh, there is uh, some uh, condition that have, has to be covered. Okay. Well, let's get into that a little bit later. Before, there's many listeners to the podcast that are literally around the world and they may not be too familiar with Bulgaria. So let's give them a little bit of a background. The country is located in southeastern Europe. It borders the Black Sea between Romania and Turkey with five different countries on its border. Those are Greece, Macedonia, Romania, Serbia, and Turkey, correct? Exactly. Okay. So the square kilometers is about 110,000 
uh, which is just about the size, a little bit less than Louisiana and a little bit <laughs> bigger than Tennessee if you come to the United States. And the population is just under 7 million. So Massachusetts. Unfortunately, yes. Okay, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, hopefully yeah, because we used to be grow. around 10 above uh, 8 million. Really? So the population yeah. is shrinking? Yeah. Why, why is that? Because of the negative, uh, negative trends of uh, birds. And uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people just decided to, to leave the country and start living somewhere in Europe or in America. Okay, so we will we'll come back to how the population size and trajectory may be impacting the energy ecosystem. But let's actually talk about Bulgaria's energy ecosystem. Where does the country sit in respect to Europe's electricity network? What do people need to know about Bulgaria electricity and energy in general? In general, I think we have, uh, according to the uh, produ production, we have one nuclear power plant with uh, 2,000 megawatts installed capacity. Mm -hmm. We have a couple thermal power plants. Uh, the common installed capacity, let's say, it's uh, above three or 4,000 uh, megawatts. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, hydropower stations uh, with uh, total installed capacity above 3,000 megawatts. Mm -hmm. So it uh, sounds like it's a very diversified mix. Is the country an energy exporter or is it an importer? Definitely, we are a net exporter. Uh, or at least we used to be a net exporter because nowadays uh, there is uh, moments, days and even months that uh, we are uh, net uh, important importer of electricity, uh, mainly from Romania and even from Turkey. But I think this is, uh, this is uh, some, some kind of, uh, of current, current situation. Uh, the, the global picture uh, is showing that we, ha we, we are and we have to be net, net export. What are some of the market conditions that would shift the country on a daily or a weekly basis from exporting to importing? We currently, currently, uh, the the weather conditions and the uh, the production uh, situation uh, of electricity here in Bulgaria determines this. But uh, we have uh, in the region we have one um, very important factor. I mean, in Turkey, the Turkish lira and the the production there from uh, renewable energy sources are are determining the the flows also. Mm -hmm. So it's both a question of the price in various countries, as well as how much is being created from a renewable standpoint, whether it's exactly. photovoltaic or wind, and what the exactly. base load on the grid is. Yeah, because you probably know, not only here in the region, but in the whole world, uh, Europe and America, this uh, generation from renewable energy sources here in the region for photovoltaics and solar are uh, merging a lot. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to IBEX. So yeah. it positions you in a fantastic place to understand the nuances of what's happening in the country. What is IBEX? Actually, IBEX is uh, the Bulgarian power exchange operator. Mm -hmm. uh, by the law, uh, we are also, uh, we have also uh, applied for license for this activity. And by the law, the local energy regulatory authority is in position to issue only one license for this activity in Bulgaria. This is the current situation according to the Energy Act. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have this license uh, issued in uh, 2014 for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So in uh, 2024, we have to apply for new one. Is that typical that a country only has one ecosystem for an energy exchange, or are there typically more than one? I should say yes. Here in the region is typical because we are pretty small markets, mm -hmm. and uh, this is uh, one of the first steps uh, from the side of the government in order to secure enough liquidity for the power exchange. Mm -hmm. And in terms of liquidity, how much money is being spent back and forth, and, and what is the, the size of the transactions that you're seeing on an annual basis? Annual basis. Annual basis. Interesting. 
Uh, I have uh, to say just a couple of things before that. Certainly. Actually, um, uh, in order to how to say to improve the transparency of the market, which is very important in the electricity market and the the deals with the electricity, mm -hmm. uh, the government initiated uh, and the parliament uh, confirmed one amendment in the Energy Act a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. according to which all, all the producers here in Bulgaria, uh, which are producing electricity for the free market mm -hmm. uh, and with installed capacity above half uh, 0 0.5 uh, megawatts, are obliged to sell uh, this electricity to, through IBEX mm. one platforms. Actually, we are running three platforms, the HET, intraday, and uh, the, the, the third one is called bilateral contracts uh, which deals uh, with delivery periods longer than one day, but mainly a week, month, quarter, or year. Mm -hmm. So the producers are free to to select uh, one or multiple of these uh, screens to, to, to sell their electricity. This, uh, of course, boosts the uh, liquidity in IBEX, which is uh, good for the company itself and uh, for, uh, for the transparency. Because uh, like every exchange, you know, after the deal, we are publishing the, the result on our website so that everybody who is interested and the community, of course, are in position to, to see what is going on on the free market. Mm -hmm. uh, so on, on your question, I have to calculate it. Uh, actually, on the day yet, uh, we are uh, about 50% uh, from the total consumption in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, 80,000 megawatts hours daily. Uh, but you want me to say hey, money? I'm just trying to get a general understanding of the size of the exchange itself. So if there's a different statistic that's that's easier to to pull, that's all right. Uh, the the statistic and the, the parameter that we are using in is the the, the percentage uh, of the total uh, traded uh, uh, amounts or volumes on the decade compared with the total consumption. And it's about 50, about 50 percent, okay. which is pretty good. And it is near to the developed market, uh, such as uh, France, Germany, and mm -hmm. uh, other in the Western part of the Europe. So effectively, you're operating as the stock market for electricity. So most people are more familiar with stocks for exactly. companies equity. You guys are helping to purchase electricity between generators and suppliers, or generators and off-takers. Can you explain even, that a little bit? Even, even, even uh, and consumers. So as an individual or, or a company, you could then become a member of the exchange. Actually, we are a wholesale market uh, as an exchange. So individuals are not, uh, 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 by the rules, they can be, can be, can be a, an exchange members. But uh, actually, it's not worth So we have a couple of members which are in consumers, factories, and so on. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the difference of the three different uh, verticals that you guys offer? Uh, so there, you said that there are three different trading mechanisms, correct? Uh, yes, three different trading plan platforms. The spot markets are represented uh, according to two screens. One of them is the head market. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an auction structured platform according to which every day till uh, 12 o'clock on the moon time, uh, noon time, uh, Central European time, we are collecting uh, offers from our participants. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, a couple of minutes after that, we are publishing the results, the clearing uh, prices and volumes for every single hour for the next 24 hours. The interesting situation here uh, that is that Ibex uh, is uh, from the very beginning of uh, operation in the Ahead market is a member of the multi-regional coupling organization in Europe uh, with the current name single the Ahead coupling and according to this uh, our order book is um, calculated uh, together with uh, the order books of all European power exchanges. Mm. 
How many European power exchanges are there? Mm, uh, every country definitely has its uh, uh, own power exchange, but how many? Let's say 15, roughly. Okay. All right. So of course, there is power exchanges like uh, Ipexport and Norpool, which are operating in uh, several uh, countries. Okay. So before we get to the second and the third mechanism, you mentioned mm -hmm. market coupling. And yeah. IBEX and market coupling has recently been in the news, specifically yeah. mentioned in Greece, specifically mentioned in Romania. Can Definitely. you explain what market coupling is and why this is important? Of course, this is a very, how to say, we, we focus uh, huge resources uh, uh, in order to achieve these uh, couplings with our neighboring countries. Of course, the first one are with uh, European uh, Union members, uh, Romania and uh, and Greece. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, I do hope that uh, we will manage to do it with uh, non-European member countries like uh, Turkey and uh uh, North Macedonia and even uh, Serbia in the near future. Uh, market coupling itself is just one automatization of the of the trading uh, uh, because currently the traders and the market participants have to um, participate in auctions for cross-border transmission capacity first in order to have the rights to uh, buy or sell electricity uh, from or out uh, some neighboring country uh, which with the market uh, with the market uh, coupling this uh, cross border transmission capacity will be uh, located implicitly uh, by participating on the day head auction and uh, in the intraday platform because currently on the intraday uh, platform we are coupled with uh, Romania and uh, there is a flow between Bulgaria and Romania um, of course, these flows is depending on the cross-border uh, megawatts that are uh, confirmed by the transmission system operators. So there's the day-ahead market, there's the intraday market. Yeah. What's the third market? The third market is uh, one platform, uh, uh, as I mentioned, called bilateral contracts. And um, it uh, connects uh, mainly producers with traders or end consumers in order to, to, to reach their best prices, in order to have deals for longer periods of delivery, mainly a month or uh, longer. Mm -hmm. What's the longest period of time that somebody can contract for? Uh, here in Bulgaria, it is one year. Of course, uh, it is, it is uh, possible to have a contract with delivery period uh, longer than one year, but in this uh, situation, I think the parties have to inform the national regulatory authority. Mm -hmm. Is that the equivalent of a PPA, a power purchase agreement, or is that a little bit different? I think it's a little bit different because, as I managed to know, the, these PPAs, they are for uh, many, many years, I think uh, five and above five years. Okay. So we are, we are getting a master class in electricity trading in Bulgaria today. On the <laughs> website, there is a, a frequently asked questions area. And within that, there's a, a piece about the continuous trading mechanism. And yes. it says that the minimum price can be negative 9,999 megawatt hour euro. And the mm -hmm. maximum price is 9,999 megawatt hour euro. Obviously a big range. And I don't believe that anybody would ever be purchasing any electricity at 9,999. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Yeah. Yeah. And if so, yeah. it's some very high quality electricity. Why <laughs> is there a negative value though? What does that mean? And how often does, does the price of electricity go negative and you're actually getting paid to consume? Actually, these negative prices a uh, couple of years ago was very, very interesting uh, question and issue here in Bulgaria and in the region, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, step by step, uh, all the people are uh, getting used to it because it is not a normal situation. Even I think uh, last year we saw a negative prices uh, for the oil trading. Uh, probably you noticed that. However, 
uh, with this uh, huge development of the production from the renewable energy sources, wind and so on mainly. Uh, obviously, uh, from physical point of view, we as uh, society and uh, energy structures are not ready to balance the system. And in some hours, there is uh, mm, uh, too much supply, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which uh, is not in position to be turned off. In this situation, the, the producers are ready to pay the consumers just to, to get and to consume their energy. Okay. All right. So we were talking about renewables then, and that causes that situation. Bulgaria started its clean energy transition in about 2007. Yeah. How have you seen the country progress since then? What challenges has it encountered? And where do you see things going in the future? Uh, interesting uh, question and topic uh, currently here in Bulgaria. Uh, probably, I don't know if you are aware, but uh, the political situation in, here in Bulgaria at the moment are a little bit complicated because we have a brand new parliament mm -hmm. and uh, now we are waiting for new government. But uh, I think that uh, the parties in the parliament are not in position to create a stable uh, government. And of course, there is an option to go to new elections uh, these months uh, for mm -hmm. a second time. But however, uh, the state have to continue with this uh, energy transition. Mm, definitely, there is uh, a lot of new projects, according to which a new, um, a new uh, photovoltaic uh, systems will be connected to the grid. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, this will be a complicated question, how this uh, production will be first physically managed, because, of course, Bulgaria is very well connected with the neighboring countries. But uh, this, uh, this production of 1,000 megawatts have to go. Go and, somewhere. Uh, yeah, go somewhere and consume somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the other question, uh, uh, this is my, of course, personal opinion, the other questions that everybody here uh, we should think about it is how these megawatts will be traded because in some hours there will be really much much supply on the market and uh, even in the so-called peak hours during the day they will become off peak uh, if we see the price curve uh, because uh, the the supply uh, is will be too much uh, of course, in some other hours, there will be a lack of uh, supply and the prices will go uh, up. But mm -hmm. this, this is a tough and uh, complicated uh, problem that have to be solved. Some, some it, it will be. Now, in 2019, the country pledged to update its national target for renewable energy and raise the share of wind and solar and other mm -hmm. to 27% of energy consumption with a goal of 2030. Do you have in, any insight on how that process is going right now? Just roughly insight. The, and my opinion is that uh, during this period, this percentage uh, percentages uh, will be will be higher according to production from solar and wind. Mm -hmm. Are, is electricity priced differently? Are there different tariff structures based on the? energy generation source, so does hydro have a different tariff than renewables in, in photovoltaic or, or in wind? Actually, on the free market, we have no tariffs because this is free market and uh, it's according to the market situation. But if we uh, go back uh, 20 minutes ago in our conversation, we, we had to say that here in Bulgaria, we have still part of the market, which is uh, so-called regulated part. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 regulated, I mean, the um, Energy Regulatory Authority are uh, determining uh, special tariffs according to which the, some selected producers are selling their electricity to the so-called public provider, mm -hmm. uh, which public provider is selling the electricity to the, the distribution companies. Uh, we have uh, four distribution companies here in Bulgaria in order to supply the end consumers, but uh, 
uh, I mean only households, because all the uh, non-household uh, consumers uh, will be obliged to go to the free market after the 1st of July this year. Mm -hmm. So in the light of this, there is some tariffs and uh, special prices for every producer. Mm -hmm. Is the government subsidizing or offering incentives for new developments in the country to move away from dirty uh, energy generating sources? Yes, uh, but not currently. I think uh, uh, 20, uh, actually not, to not mention the exact year, but some, mm -hmm. some, some years ago, the government stopped subsidizing these new projects. But there is a lot of uh, project, uh, projects which are running at the moment uh, with uh, thousands of uh, capacity, thousand megawatts of capacity with um, five to 10 years in the future with PPAs with the state and the state is obliged to pay them a uh, high, high price for, the, for their production. Okay. So the According to this, uh, we have one structure here uh, under the Ministry of uh, Energy Mm -hmm. called uh, Security Fund, mm -hmm. uh, which main task is to secure the cash flow between, between the, these uh, companies in the energy sector on the regulated part of the market. But actually, everybody here as a consumer, consumer of electricity is obliged, is obliged to pay um, uh, some amount of money called uh, uh, obligation to the society. Uh, I think uh, 20, uh, roughly 20 euros per megawatt hour, mm -hmm. well, between 15 and 20, but it's uh, updated every year by the regulatory authority to this fund. And this fund is obliged to pay to the uh, renewable energy producers mm -hmm. um, this, uh, I would say, additional money to the uh, prices that they are, they are receiving from the uh, market selling their electricity. Fifty to twenty dollars per megawatt hour is a significant percentage of the roughly of the something market. like this. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Now, for for Ibex, you're leaders in the space. You're doing more than just offering trading platforms for for electricity. What is the Green Center? Ah, thanks for this question. I was prepared to mention in the end. Uh, actually. Um, we were created as a company uh, owned 100% by the Bulgarian Energy Holding, which is uh, state-owned under the Ministry of Energy. Mm -hmm. This was during uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. But a uh, few years later, according to one request uh, by the European Commission, and in the light of transparency and independency of the power exchange operator, independency from other energy sector companies. Mm -hmm. um, Bulgarian Energy Holding transferred uh, the, the company to the uh, Bulgarian Stock Exchange in Bulgaria, which is uh, the, the major owner there is the Ministry of Finance. Mm -hmm. But currently we are separated actually from the energy sector as, as a company. Uh, I'm telling you that uh, just uh, to share that currently we are 100% owned by the Bulgarian Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. And uh, together with them, uh, in the end of March, actually, we initiated this Green Financial Energy Tra uh, Center. Um, the, the initial idea was to create some kind of think tank and to attract <laughs> smart people uh, ready to think about the problems and to determine and uh, propose concrete politics on the government in order to secure the, the green future on the Bulgaria and in the region. Of course, my position there is uh, I should be responsible for the energy uh, and electricity part of, uh, of, uh, of this initiative. Uh, my colleagues uh, from the Bulgarian Stock Exchange we will cover the, the, financial, the financial part. What are some of the challenges that you're trying to address and what are some of the solutions or proposed solutions, if you're able to share them, uh, might come uh, up in the future? Yeah, I, I'm able, but uh, definitely is, it is uh, pretty soon uh, to, to discuss uh, some, something in concrete. Uh, mm -hmm. Our main task now is to attract people um, 
with uh, position and uh, ready to support this idea just to think about the concrete problems mm -hmm. and uh, how they can be solved. Uh, and the, the, the main thing actually is to, to attract people just themselves, not, not the company or the company to, to propose some CEOs or CFOs. Uh, from my part, of course, I will, uh, I will propose, uh, for example, the market coupling with non-European members like Turkey and North Macedonia to be uh, moved forward because it is very difficult currently to develop this project. Actually, we have a um, current project with Macedonia. We have very close relations with Turkey, but definitely we are uh, in position to do nothing concrete according to the market capital with them. Okay. Constantine, this has been fantastic. Thank you for your time. I have one issue though that, that we haven't talked about, and it's a little bit tongue in cheek, but I'm disappointed in IBEX. And well, what I mean by that, is you're located near the European Alps. And in the European Alps, there is a mountain goat called the Ibex. <laughs> but the mascot for your organization is a bull and not the Ibex mountain goat. I think it's a missed opportunity. Oh, I'll be, I, I will investigate that for sure. <laughs> All right, yeah. one, one last question for you, Constantine. What should we have talked about that we haven't yet discussed? My idea here was to mention this Green Financial and Energy Center, but you were first according to that. Well, uh, we haven't discussed the, the COVID situation. All right, let's do it. Huh. Uh, we have interesting situation uh, about the uh, Dehiat market price here in uh, Bulgaria and in the region and even in uh, uh, in Europe, I think they are pretty high for the second quarter of this year. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we know that last year we uh, we were in the beginning of the pandemic, and these pretty low levels of the market market prices was normal, having in mind the COVID mm -hmm. situation. But now we have is extremely extremely high prices, and I was wondering how is the situation in the US. Yeah. Well, that is a conversation for another podcast. Ha, definitely. The is a very complicated and nuanced energy ecosystem, just like Europe does. Um, what I can say, though, is that if you'd like, we can have a follow-up conversation. With pleasure. All right. Constantine, I don't think that we could end this on a better note. Thank you so much for your time. Again, the CEO of IBEX, the Independent Bulgarian Energy Exchange. Thank you very much for joining Thank you today. very much for having me and see you soon. All right, take care. Thank you. Our leadership in science and industry, our hopes for peace and security, our obligations to ourselves as well as others, all require us to make this effort to solve these mysteries, to solve them for the good of all men and for the progress of all people.